Hello, brothers and sisters. Let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to delve into your word again. We ask that you bless the sermon and uh, give us a discernment in the time that we're living in. In Jesus' name, Amen. I titled this sermon, Approaching Doom, because I want to take a look at the life of the prophet of doom, Jeremiah. As we are fast approaching the final events to take place on this earth before the glorious second coming of Jesus, the three angels' messages have to go out to the world and in the life of Jeremiah, we find a wonderful type of what the antitypical Jeremiah, namely the commandment-keeping people of God, can expect while they bring these messages to the world. So let's gird up our loins and see what we can learn from the life of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 states, Before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah was born into the Levitical priesthood, and from his youth he had been trained for holy duty. During those joyful years of preparation, he did not realize that he had been chosen from birth to be a prophet unto the nations. God saw one who would be true to his trust and would stand for the right against great opposition. Similarly, God has chosen every member of his commandment keeping people to bring this message of hope to the world against great opposition. Jeremiah 1 verse 6 reads, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Words undoubtedly uttered by most of us when we realize that when we are part of God's people, He wants us to be His ambassadors to tell the world of the good news of Jesus Christ and that if we love Him, we should keep all His commandments. Jeremiah was about 17 years old when he spoke these words out of a sense of unworthiness when the divine call came. And like in Jeremiah, God sees in each of us sons and daughters of the Most High, if we will stay true to His trust and would stand for the right against op great opposition. Jeremiah 1 verse 7 and 8, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Thou therefore gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defenced city and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Jeremiah had to stand before his own people, representing the church, and before the nations as a witness to truth and justice. In a time of unparalleled apostasy, he had to illustrate the worship of the only true God through his way of life and character. And when he was thrown into prison because of his fearless utterances, he had to, and he did, continue to speak directly against sin. He was despised, hated, rejected by all people and finally had to see the literal fulfillment of his pro own prophecy about the impending doom that was approaching. We have come to a point in the history of this earth where it has become extremely probable that we will soon see the literal fulfillment of the warnings and calls we make to the nations and to the apostasy in the church. Jeremiah 1 verses 16 And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto the gods and worshipped the works of their own hands. Hard was the straight testimony that Jeremiah had to give. The prophecies of the fast approaching judgments he had to convey fearlessly 
and not watered down or sugar-coated. Along with these messages, he also had to encourage the people with assurance that there is forgiveness for all who turn away from their evil ways. From the beginning of his ministry, he sought to encourage the people and lay the foundations of their spiritual life wide and deep in repentance for their transgressions. And that is exactly what we must do today. We must build our own spiritual foundation with repentance for our sins and then we must encourage others to do so. Now they were urged to begin building wisely and for eternity, casting aside the rubbish of apostasy and unbelief and using as foundation material the pure gold, the refined silver and precious stones, namely faith and obedience and good works which alone are acceptable in the sight of a holy God. Jeremiah 3 verses 12 to 14 Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. What an amazing God we serve. Could you hear him pleading for the people to return to him? And he did not even leave the people to wonder how they should return. Through Jeremiah, he gave them the exact words with which he could, they could repent. And those words still apply to us today. We read them in Jeremiah 3 verses 22 to 25. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. We lie down in our shame and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. It is God's desire that we come to Him in humility and repentance and turn away from our backslidings and evil ways. And we must encourage others to do the same. The hills and the multitude of mountains referred to here are the idols and the worship of the idols on the high places and it is also referred to in Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth and not from these false gods and idols that we make for ourselves from the ways and the things of the world. We must call the people out of the world and we must get the trends of the world out of the church. Jeremiah 6 verse 16 reads, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Just as Jeremiah pleaded for the Israelites to return to the old ways, likewise we as a church need to return to the standards and principles God has set for us in the Bible and emphasized in the testimonies. We must repent of our backslidings, get rid of the worldly trends and teachings that crept into the church, and then we must get out there and reach others. Jeremiah 17 verse 24 and 25 reads, If you diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day, to do no work therein, then shall they enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in the chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. At the command of the Lord, Jeremiah took his position at one of the main entrances to the city and there he emphasized the importance of keeping holy the Sabbath day. This means that the message was given to the people of the city as well as to the strangers coming in and going out of the city. Applying it to today, it means we must warn the world of this danger of losing sight of the sanctity of the true Sabbath. He warned them not to desecrate the day by doing their own secular pursuits 
and that a blessing is promised on condition of obedience. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the people did not listen to Jeremiah's call to repentance. Although there was little hope left in Jeremiah, he was not allowed to remain silent while the kingdom's destruction threatened. Those who remained faithful to God had to be encouraged to persevere in righteousness, and sinners had to be convinced, if possible, to turn away from iniquity. We must do the same, persevere in righteousness and convince to turn away from iniquity. Jeremiah 7 verse 2 to 4. Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Jeremiah was also commanded by the Lord to stand in the courtyard of the temple and speak to all the people who went in and out of the temple. So now this message was directly to those in the church. He was forbidden to soften any of his messages so that the backsliders and sinners in the church could have the fullest possible opportunity to listen and turn from their wrong ways. Jeremiah 7 verse 9 to 10. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense to Baal, and walk after their gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered? God makes it clear that only through the most thorough heart reform could the impending punishment be deviated from. In vain was the trust they placed in the temple and the services, Rituals and ceremonies could not atone for sin. Notwithstanding their claim to be the chosen people of God, reformation of the heart and life practices alone could save them from the inevitable consequences of continued transgression. Likewise, having your name on the membership book of the church today does not give you a golden ticket to heaven. If you don't get back to the old ways and a thus saith the Lord, we will also bear the inevitable consequences. It is possible to be a partial formal believer and yet be found wanting and lose eternal life. It is possible to practice some of the Bible injunctions and be regarded as a Christian and yet perish because you lack qualifications essential to Christian character. If you neglect or treat with indifference the warnings that God has given, if you cherish or excuse sin, you are sealing your soul's destiny. You will be weighed in the balance and found wanting. Grace, peace and pardon will be forever withdrawn. Jesus will have passed by, never again to come within reach of your prayers and entreaties. While mercy lingers, while the Savior is making intercession, let us make thorough work for eternity. Obedience to God is not negotiable in preparing for eternity. During the days of Jeremiah, the inhabitants of Judah were prone to believe that a strict observance of the divinely appointed services of the temple would preserve them from a just punishment for their wicked cause. What a lesson is this to men holding positions of responsibility today in the church of God? What a solemn warning to deal faithfully with wrongs that bring dishonor to the cause of truth. Let none who claim to be the depositories of God's law flatter themselves that the regard they may outwardly show toward the commandments will preserve them from the exercise of divine justice. Let none refuse to be reproved for evil, nor charge the servants of God with being too zealous in endeavoring to cleanse the camp from evil doing. A sin-hating God calls upon those who claim to keep His law to depart from all iniquity. A neglect to repent and to render willing obedience will bring upon men and women today as serious consequences as came upon ancient Israel. There is a limit beyond which the judgments of God can no longer be delayed. The desolation of Jerusalem in the days of Jeremiah is a solemn warning to modern Israel that the counsels and admonitions given them through chosen instrumentalities cannot be disregarded with impunity. God's plan is not to send messengers who will please and flatter sinners. 
He delivers no message of peace to lull the unsanctified into carnal security. Instead, he lays heavy burdens upon the conscience of the wrongdoer and pierces his soul with the sharp arrows of conviction. Ministering agents present to him the fearful judgments of God to deepen the sense of need and prompt the agonizing cry, What must I do to be saved? Acts 16 verse 30. But the hand that humbles to the dust, rebukes sin, and puts pride and ambition to shame is the hand that lifts up the penitent, stricken one. With deepest sympathy, he who permits the chastisement to fall inquires, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? When man has sinned against the holy and merciful God, he can pursue no cause so noble as to repent sincerely and confess his errors in tears and bitterness of soul. This God requires of him. He accepts nothing less than a broken heart and a contrite spirit. The spirit of opposition to reproof that led to the persecution and imprisonment of Jeremiah exists today. Many refuse to heed repeated warnings, preferring rather to listen to false teachers who flatter their vanity and overlook their evil doing. In the day of trouble, such will have no sure refuge, no help from heaven. God's chosen servants should meet with courage and patience the trials and sufferings that befall them through reproach, neglect, and misrepresentations. They should continue to discharge faithfully the work God has given them to do, ever remembering that the prophets of old and the Savior of mankind and His apostles also endured abuse and persecution for the word's sake. When the religion of Christ is most held in contempt, when His law is most despised, then should our zeal be the warmest and our courage and firmest the most unflinching. To stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us, to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few, this will be our test. At this time, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others, courage from the cowardice, and loyalty from the treason. Jeremiah 31 verse 12 reads, Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Amid all the apostasy in which the nation had fallen, God in His mercy also showed Jeremiah what was beyond the disturbing scenes of the present, and he was permitted to look upon the glorious prospects of the future, when God's people would be released from the hand of the enemy and would return to Zion. Likewise, we too can look forward to enter that land without sorrow and pain. But just like Jeremiah, we also have a message to preach before we can enter that wonderful land. And it is not a popular message. The world, and unfortunately also in our own ranks, people do not want to hear the straight testimony. And like Jeremiah, we will also be despised, hated, and rejected, no matter how nicely we try to convey the message. So let's be encouraged with these words from him 4 to 8. There is a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. And in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. From the day of his call to the close of his ministry, Jeremiah stood before Judah as a tower and a fortress, against which the wrath of man could not prevail. They shall fight against thee, the Lord had forewarned his servant, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. May we take courage from the life of Jeremiah in these final hours of our earth's history, and may we remain standing with our eyes fixed on King Jesus. And may we not go back to business as usual, 
May we get our own house in order so that we can carry out the call to the nations to get out of Babylon. And may we get the trends of Babylon out of our church. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the examples in the Bible. Examples like Jeremiah. Please help us in these days that we live that we can be also true to your word and stand boldly against the opposition. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe to our channel, click here. To get notifications, click on the bell. To watch the next video, click here. Thank you and we'll see you again.